As you might notice by what is around us, we are not quite in Kansas anymore. We are in a slightly different layout. Uh, that is because we are going to be demoing and working on World Anvil together. Me and Logan, side by side, comrades in arms, but arms are articles. And uh, we will be uh, building out a little bit for Countless Heroes. And Logan, refresh your screen. I redid the page a little. Refresh uh, what screen? The browser. Which browser? The one with the world of Veil vale on it. Yours. Okay. Um, I did a little update, uh, so it's a little easier to read. Um, it was very uneven before, and I think I fixed it. So I am going to be working on getting this layout a little bit better for the first few minutes, while Ange kind of describes what we're going to be doing here, talking a little bit about... Uh, uh, her process, I guess, and then maybe asking me some questions because I realized my screen is super tiny. So that's not good. Well, uh, one of the things I'll be talking about a little bit is maybe a little bit behind the scenes of what we work on uh, as we're building countless heroes. Um, what you see on live stream is not necessarily everything that is happening. We have a lot of behind the scenes work that has to be done and we want to try to provide as much information as possible to you guys, the viewers, because we are, you know, there's a lot of content. There's a lot of episodes. We stream five days a week. It is pretty impressive. It is a, it is a monumental achievement. If you catch up with us, we are forever grateful to those of you crazy people who have, we love you. Wonderful. Um, but we want to make sure that it is possible for you guys to look over what we've done in the past and at least get some semblance of an idea of what our world is like and who these people are that we meet all every episode. So world anvil has been an incredibly useful tool for us. That being said, we got a lot of work to do. So we have, oh. Yeah. Can I have you fix something really quick? Sure. Uh, do you have a scroll wheel on your mouse? I do. Can you zoom in by hitting control and zoom in a little bit on yours? Uh, one more no notch. Oh, that's too much spec. 125. Is that it? That's, those 125, 150. It's going by increments. You can't. Okay. So, Let me right, see. That's fine. Let me that's see if better. I can. Let me see if you do like a 130, 135, that would be great. Nope. And then what you see is what they see. So uh, that's not that's, fine. that's the best that's I can much do. better. I can do it from here. Uh, the, just under just know that a little bit more of the bottom is going to be cut off than than you might want. Understood. So I'll keep it. things in the middle. I think that's that's a fair way to do it. Um, all right. So as I was saying, uh, we have a lot of stuff that needs to be implemented into our world anvil just because we've accumulated a lot of uh, a lot of assets, as we call them. I'm in two places or I was in two places just now. Um, anyway. Um, so one of the things I wanted to show was our assets document. Um, we keep a Logan. I think I'm in two places instead of my screen. You're sharing my camera. I want to like give myself a high five. All right. I don't know how that happened or why, but uh, <laughs> hold on a second. That's uh, that's pretty amazing. That's awesome. Look at what's going on there. That's I'm so great. coordinated, me and my twin. <laughs> okay, let me try. That that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to show your our assets on Twitch, Matthew. Thank oh, you for asking. Did I minimize I'm just waiting to not be on screen twice now. But Matthew, now you know how I feel. your question is on our stream. It's magical. No, it's there. Um, that <laughs> should not be happening. Well, how about this? I'll just I'll just talk Did a little bit. Did that fix it? Let me hold on. We'll see. Do, 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 do. There we go. Fixed. Okay. So anyway, we'll try that again. Um, we are. Okay. It's fine. Here is our assets document. It's probably gonna get a little cut off on screen. Not um, that much. So right now on the screen, uh, we can see. Well, you can see what you see. Both of the screens are now my screen instead of me, but that's okay. I can I can deal with that. That's definitely it has doable. To do with how it's reading Zoom. I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna fix it. I can fix it. All right, so I'm gonna do this just for the sake of making this a little readable for everybody. I'm gonna add a column or two. So now you guys should be able to see the um, 
the names of our create or the names of our NPCs. This is our NPC document. Oh, I think I can actually get rid of one of these. So, okay, so here is our NPCs document. This is a document that is always in progress and it's not even complete. We realized a little bit as the stream started, we needed to be able to track all of the NPCs that we keep running into, especially if we were going to be inputting them into World Anvil. So we've come up with a, a few different ways of categorizing them and uh, different, uh, different little pieces of detail that we wanted to be able to input into World Anvil. Now, this is stuff that we usually fill in on the fly as it's happening in game. So when Logan is describing something, me or somebody else, maybe Tessa, is in this document and we are, you know, asking him for spelling, double checking what the race is going to be. Uh, this is looking... really low resolution on, on, on screen. Well, I don't think anybody can can't do anything. It. It's fine. I'll zoom in a little bit. If it lets me. How's that, Logan? Is that better? I don't know. Nothing changed. I'll find out when I zoom in. Um, we will attempt to see if that helps a little bit. There. That should help. Okay, anyway, so uh, we have a couple of features on here that we fill in when we are adding characters. We have the name of the character, obviously. Uh, the first two columns are how we track whether or not it's actually been input into the, um, into the World Anvil for Countless Heroes. Uh, we have categories that indicate the kind of, uh, the way we actually organize our NPCs in World Anvil. So there's allies, enemies, neutral, or deceased. So there is a little bit of shuffling that sometimes happens depending on someone's status. Um, and we have not been tracking this. I'm starting to do it now, but the first episode of the appearance of that NPC, sometimes you can, that can help a little bit to understand where in the arc or where in the series that character appears and starts. Um, what is that shaking head? The, you, you just were flashing onto your assets and back. You're, you were flashing your assets. Um, because I, I clicked on a button and it switched something and it's just horrible. So anyway, it's all right. so we're, we're learning we're with it. Our first so, uh, first episode number, uh, this importance is a slightly subjective, uh, subject uh, thing. Um, I mostly did it so that somebody knows whether or not we have to put a lot of effort into describing that character in an article. Um, so a random, like when it's clear that it's a random character, uh, Logan made him up for like one scene. Uh, no one's ever going to go back to the, uh, the finely crafted China doll unicorn manufacturer, like something very small and very niche that we know we're not going to go back to. They'll probably get labeled as a bit part. Um, but Again, this is something that is flexible as we track. If somebody ends up becoming a more major character, we can increase their importance. This is not something that is in World Anvil, but as a reference, this is actually really useful because the control F in Google um, is like a nice quick database lookup. So we can look for keywords and things to find all of our characters at once. Um, so this is our shorthand use. Obviously, we have uh, race, uh, gender, identity, uh, their job or their class, if they have one, or we were able to tease it out. Uh, a description as best we can. I went. I actually went back to the first episode Afra appeared and found this description of Afra because um, we hadn't had it written down before. Um, the faction there. Uh, the we had these are sort of a mixed bag uh, faction. The organization they're part of. Their relationship with the party again. That's going to be sort of subjective and tonal. Um, uh, any other notes um, about that person, uh, whether that's how they act, what sort of uh, what sort of things we might want to put into the article. Again, the other episode appearances, that's again sort of a um, optional feature. Uh, author is just so that we can track things and notes is miscellaneous. Honestly, I should get rid of that column because we, we have two notes. We don't need that. So, on to World Anvil. So in our World Anvil, here's the front end. This is the front end of World Anvil. It's very, very wonderful. Um, we have a number of types of articles on the left side of the page. 
um, including MPC. I like you you're doing. No. Just so you know. Why? No, because I just added a new thing because I forgot that I can't do work on it because that breaks you. So one second. <laughs> okay. All I think working I live. Do live. Yeah. Not well, normally I can I can work in what's called studio mode, which means mm -hmm. all the edits happen off screen. But that breaks your face. It, it either it doubles your face uh, or it doubles your assets. Gotcha. So uh, one second, I'm gonna. I wouldn't mind. Be all done. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, and and we'll be done here. I'm just trying to find this one thing. Hold on. There it is. <laughs> all right. Let me get this uh, transform down. And so, are we leaving this magical darkness? Do you have us in? And no, I'm fixing. I just I said see I a map. It. You don't. You don't I see attention. a map. You don't pay attention. I did hear you. I did hear you. you I was just reacting. No, I was reacting to Mike laughing. Oh, <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> there you go. What is that? Is that from something? It's from Bill O'Reilly having a tantrum on camera back in the 80s. <laughs> it's fine. Um, all right, so we promise the next time we do this, we'll be smoother because we'll know what we're doing and Logan will have. nothing. Okay. Okay, then I promise I will try really hard to imagine that we're more organized than we are. Um, anyway, right. I, I'll so, give you that. so you guys in chat can maybe have a little feedback on this, but for now, my plan is to at least put in one or two articles for NPCs. Uh, we have our wonderful, a number of people here in chat are actually our players. Um, a Mulder is uh, Mike, who plays Lark, and Jay, who plays Oshin, is also here. Um, and they've both done some writing for us. Um, Jay's actually given me a couple of articles to put into World Anvil, and so has Zach. I'm not sure if Zach is in there, Dusk Fey Druid. Uh, but I will be, just because um, he literally wrote this and pasted it and gave it to me probably an hour ago, I'm going to do one of Zach's first. So Zach started from the top. He gave me some A names to work on. So first person he gave me information for was Akamon. Akamon, we're going to say we're in progress so that it's the conditional formatting isn't working on this. But for now. All right. So let's What's you seeing on your screen. I'm working on the wrong one. Ah. That would explain it. So here, Akamon, first one. I checked the box that we're going to put him in World Anvil right now, and then we're going to mark him as in progress. So I'll go to the front of our World Anvil dashboard. So here is the World of Veil, vale, and I'm going to add a character. Oops, I'm sorry. We did the zoom in based on the cover, so you need to zoom back out to 100% to be even. There we go. We okay. To play with this. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, we'll thank make, you we'll all for dealing, it. putting up with us. So we're going to add the character of Akamon, and when I get to the article, we will talk about who Akamon is. So we're going to add a character, create new content, and now we have this very beautiful, very thorough list of features that we will go through a little bit at a time. Incredible list of stuff. So I'm going to paste all the information that Zach sent me about Akamon. It's not in progress. That's not what he sent. There we go. Okay. So when you have smaller characters that don't have huge storylines, or honestly, don't, we're just trying to get some basic information up about them. We're going to have a couple of sentences about each person. So Akamon, he's now the title of the article. So a Akamon... And Logan, this is where, when I read through it, if you have detail, you correct me and tell me what to fix on this description. Yeah. All right, so Akamon is a tiefling member of an unnamed group who caused direct problems to the party due to the death of his sister, Duella. Correct. They are often um, uh, related to a group called The Five, which was an organization um, along with... Uh, several others in the city that were trying to work subtly and covertly to um, to remove the king from power, even kill the king for being a, a vampire. Um, but uh, they are not actually a part of the Five. The Five was just one of their um, best term would be as like a splinter cell. So Akamon himself was not a part of the Five, but the sister was. Um, 
let's see. I'm going to I'm going to do a little bit of editing on this to make it uh just, you know, abide by my sense of needing to micromanage. Would it be accurate to call them a mercenary group or no? I would say that yes, as of right now, they that's the best description you could have for them is that they are a mercenary group. And he does and they don't have a name. The the mercenary group directly doesn't really have They don't have any sort of direct organization, no. Okay. They are just mercenaries out there for hire. And they do work here and there. Uh, they probably uh, are also technically adventurers. They do a little of, uh, of uh, independent adventuring. They're not associated with a guild. I don't have a... Uh... We don't have an article for the party. Hmm. All right. So, a tiefling member of a mercenary group who came into conflict with the party due to the death of his sister, Noella. Correct. I see that is a uh, 100% accurate. He sought vengeance and the name of her killer. Correct. Mm -hmm. That was the big is... thing he wanted the name. He um, doesn't necessarily stopped on that pursuit, but he's at least relaxed. Is forsaken forsook? <laughs> What's the past tense of forsaken? Forsaked? Forsooken? Forsooken? Shooked. You shooked. I'm gonna say abandoned. There you go. Okay. A tiefling member of a mercenary group who came into conflict with the party due to the death of his sister, Duella. He sought vengeance in the name of her killer. A warlock who entered into a pact with the King of Secrets, like Nathan formerly was, Akamon abandoned his pact in exchange for allying with Jezebel, the vulgar muse. He made this pact at the same time as Nathan. Uh, that's not true. No? He did not succeed. There was a, the challenge was... Oh, I thought he also made the deal. Okay. I don't think so. I, I'm thinking okay, about so it. I don't think that they did, because he showed up late. Okay. It was a challenge to see which one of them was going to be able to... But I thought at the, I thought at the end of the episode, she gave them both the opportunity. There was a whole thing. We... episode? No. Yes, that was the was first it? Jot episode. That was a job. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That that episode was a blur. So, all right. So, <laughs> I, it may very well be. I'll have to go back and watch that one again. This is part of why it's good to have those why first episode they appeared in thing because I use that often to go back and watch an episode again to catch certain things. So these bit parts, as Angela said, become more important. And then I go, look, you called yeah. them a bit part. Ha. Huh? It's more just their current importance as we understand it. Oh, there you go. It could change. It could Subject be wrong. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so so how about this? Um, Akamon... Akamon is a warlock entered into a pact with the King of Secrets, as Nathan formerly was. All right, and for now, we're gonna put in the private storyteller notes. Mm -hmm. 
did research did Akamon successfully abandon his pact in exchange for allying with Jezebel the vulgar muse <laughs> and then I will put the episode and we will just have somebody look this up And I add it to his notes. And highlight. I'm just making sure that there are no notes in this. Okay. All right, so we have for some of these, we're not going to necessarily go into the tremendous amount of detail just because we don't have it. So when we only have a sentence or two like this, we are not necessarily going to fill out every feature. But because we do have a little bit of information, let's go down the list and see what we can actually fill out. Some of this stuff's going to end up on the sidebar, and I think that is worth putting in. Um, let's see. Uh, he is not dead, correct? He is not dead that you're aware of. Okay, then we do not have any circumstances of death to talk about. Um, Logan, have you made any decisions about his physical appearance? If we have to look that up in the episode, we can do that, but I don't think you did. Up. Oh, there were, there were several things, uh, particularly about the color of his skin and the, the way his horns looked. Uh, there were some very particular things, but nothing off the top of my head that strikes as super important right this moment. Okay. Uh, but that, yeah, that's something we're going to need to go back to look into. Um, but there was That's something that, that was particular about him, and I can't remember what it was exactly. Okay. Um, we are going to have some gaps in these, just because we some stuff falls through the cracks. A lot of this and... is made up on the fly, and then I rely on others' notes and things to help fill in the gaps, um, and my memory, which is not the best. Uh, so, absolute shocking, unacceptable, I didn't make a tiefling article. And normally, before... Uh, You'd think, oh, shoot, I gotta go back and make a tiefling article, then I gotta come back and refresh. World Anvil, at least, understood that that was an issue, and often you'd run into things where you'd have to make something as you were creating another article, and they created a link that lets you make an article as you're building here. So I'm going to make a tiefling article. Because we didn't have one. So that's gonna be his species. We don't have any related... Uh, would it be fair to assume that he is currently in Cinderhaven? Or no? Is, Do we not know? He is not currently in Cinder Haven. It's not, okay, I would say no. Well, then we're just not putting it in. Um, all right. Uh, we will look up his physical details since we don't really have them right now. Um, naming, we don't know anything other than Akamon, so we're just going to leave that. Um, personal history employment i want to look for uh, failures and embarrassments there might be some there maybe just depending on when we look up the jot episode if he did not successfully win the affections of the vulgar muse we might do that uh, we don't know anything really personal about akamon right now so there's not much to say here about gender identity sexuality morality and philosophy we don't have a lot of that um we could always add a pronouns if we wanted to i think that would be fair mm -hmm. In the yeah, side yeah, thing, absolutely. Uh, so we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We don't have any. We don't have the physical information yet. Yeah, because biological sex, I don't think, is as useful in terms of a label. I think. I think a gender identity would make more sense. Um, personal. Let's see. Do we have? I'm looking specifically. I'm looking for his family ties. That would probably be in social. Uh, affiliated organizations. Not. There's no name, so there's no organization name. Right. Uh, where are you at? Family members. Family ties. Here we go.
question, the five. Are there were there literally just five members? Correct. Okay. As far as anyone knows, yes. Um, I don't think that um, there were five main members. They had some extra help here and there, like because um, all five of them died that day. Uh, Rosie, or excuse me, Daisy was uh, one of the people that was kind of helping them in the city and considers themselves a part of that group, but they were not part of the main group. I am over here working on defining the boundaries of the countries. Um, so people, anybody's interested in what I'm doing down here. So this here is an undefined uh, country and area, and it should probably be grayed out, but I want to kind of finish the mountain range here. I know the mountain range goes down here. I don't know what the rest of the, the land is like, but this is below the kingdom of Soldan. Soldan ends around this borderline up here. Uh, and then uh, to the north uh, uh, northwest of here, Northeast of this is is where the uh, the Kingdom of Sodam starts, right up there towards the top right. And then as it comes all the way up here, here is uh, this here is um, Cinderhaven, uh, this is Highwater, and over here is the small village of um, uh, Sunflower Village. What the heck is it called? Brookville. Brookville? No, it's Brook. <sighs> this is where I should go look at World Anvil. Uh, Zach reports that Akamon was a blue tiefling. That's right. So I'm going to Farbrook. add that. Farbrook was the name. Ah, she just looked over to the... He is in Farbrook, or... Farbrook From... was the name of the village I didn't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to be real helpful, having the chat up. Yes. Yes, it's very nice the chat is here. Uh, and then this kingdom is pretty huge. So that is actually a very large kingdom. Uh, and it stretches up towards this area here. Kind of cuts off around here. Neato. And then uh, for those interested, the, uh, the, the uh, Republic of Kiros is actually across this waterway here in the bay. It starts up in here. It goes over into this. So it's kind of northeastern. That goes up quite a ways. And then Cali is from way up here. Neat. Technically an unincorporated part of Kiros, I think, is what we originally said. But we're working on it. Goodness gracious. Okay, um, uh, so my question, Logan, is here is what I've written mm -hmm. so far about his family ties. Uh, Go for it. His sister, Duella, was a member of the chaotic resistance organization known as the Five. She was killed by Amy during a hostage situation in the Beer Forge, where the Five were threatening the party. Oh, Haley. 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 Because... Right, you're because right, I Haley... just forgot. <laughs> I just got the name wrong. H-A-L-E-Y. It's the simplest way to pronounce to, to do it. Okay, so we don't we don't have an article for Haley yet either. Oh, we should definitely put in here that there somewhere on our stream there will be spoilers as we're filling out this information. That's a good point. Yeah, since we're talking about uh, uh, well, about specifically, this. okay, so specifically, I'm putting in a spoiler in the article. Yeah, because there is a spoiler tag, and we'll see how it works. It might not work great, but we'll find out. Um, I, can... I don't think it works. I don't think it's great for inline spoilers. It's better if there's a paragraph of spoiler. Got it. Let me go take a look because I can hide my... and I can go and look at it on my thing. I'm going to save my draft so I don't lose my information. And we're looking at 
So let's see what the article was. Ekema. Uh Okay, no, it does it does cut access this page. It does break a it, line. Oh. You can see it on mine. Uh it, aren't I like the main account on this? But it's not published. I should be able to see it being the owner of the page. Fair. Um All right, so yes, the spoiler tag is not ideal for this particular situation. Now, do you have them listed under enemies or allies or what? I have him listed under, um, I will, I'm about to give him a subject. Because I hadn't gone there yet. Uh, so, navigation. Oh, there we go. Hey, new feature in World Anvil. We can affect the title of the article URL. Nice. I'm going to call it Akamon instead of Akamon article. Category. I'm going to call him neutral. Is that fair? Rather than enemy? I would say neutral's fair at this point. Okay. And under design, I'm going to add some stuff in the sidebar so you have two options for sidebar you have you can have things over or under that sidebar which you can see here it says uh, species there's a sidebar here you can have something show up over or under that whiter that lighter box or you can have something at the top or the bottom of the content of that box so mm -hmm. i want the pronouns to be in the box not mm -hmm. under the box so I'm gonna go to panel content top. Okay. And I, do you, should pronouns be like should pronoun be prominent and be the first thing on I, these? I think so. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just learning. I don't know a lot of this stuff. It's very cool. Neat. That's neat stuff. So we're gonna save. I haven't published this yet. I'm gonna refresh. I refreshed accidentally. Let's preview instead of just opening a new page. Okay. Ah, wrong one. I mean, I think I need to make it just bold. I'm not going to make a header. That was my, my bad. So pronouns, and then I'm just going to bold it. And then maybe make a break. Uh, so... World Anvil utilizes uh, Blackboard code or BB code for its um, for its coding in these boxes um, instead of HTML, which has the um, the sort of angled brackets. It uses the bar brackets. Um, you can always look up BB code. They use a lot of it. Um, some of it they've disabled, but um, that's mostly for um, security purposes. They have some image image embedding is not enabled. So you can't take something from outside of uh, the World Anvil space and put it in the articles. It will strip those. Um, but for the most part, you can use just about any of the... Okay, I'm still learning. Um, let's see. All right, so I need to make a, a break. I need to make it a separate line. Okay. This is what happens when you're doing these. You end up like sort of nitpicking a little bit as you're trying to get these... To look quite right. World Anvil might... I'm going to have to check this. But World Anvil might be sensitive enough to understand that if I put an extra line break between things, it might separate it out cleanly. I'll find out right now. That's too many. That's too many. It's too many lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, make a line break instead of that. Okay. Yay, um, HTML. I'm going to share a different screen now. Go for it. Because I want to uh, show off, do the thing you actually asked me to do as Yay. opposed to this. Hooray! Uh, I'm so excited. Since that's that's what you were asking me to do. Uh, let me adjust this a little bit. Okay. 
And then I want to show you a thing that's here. All right, so I got it pretty good. So right now we have pronouns, he, him, species, tiefling. When you click in, you're going to see a article that doesn't exist. There's nothing here for tieflings yet. Um, but so here is... Um, here is what the article looks like right now for Akamon. Now you're going to see this big red lettering. This big red lettering or this big red box says the research question. Did Akamon successfully abandon his pact in exchange for allying with Jezebel? That's a thing that we need to go look up. Now what's here is not visible to everybody. This is a GM note. This is something that a co-owner can see. This is something that the editors can see, not that the public can see. So that is a question that we want to look up but the public can't necessarily see that. So we're not upsetting the style of this page by putting that in. I will show you for the sake of argument, uh, I will show you what it looks like for the average person. Um, they're not going to see that box. They're just going to see the article looking like this. This is just what it's going to look like in public view. So for all intents and purposes, this is how we've done it. Um, I think... I'm going to play around a little bit with the show spoiler, but for now it's good enough. Um, I will find a way to better phrase that. But the idea is here. Um, all right. So Logan, let me finish reading this to you and you tell me if this sounds correct. Uh, so family ties for Akamon. His sister Duella was a member of the chaotic resistance organization known as the five. She was killed by Haley during a hostage situation in the Beer Forge, where the five were threatening the party for information and vengeance against the queen, then Queen Saldana. That sounds okay. exactly right to me. So I link to Saldana. You can see Saldana's here. I actually added a little bit of, um, on each article, you can add a, a line of information that will show up on hover text when you do direct links. So you can just hover over here and see that Saldana is an elf knowledge cleric. And that's just a little tiny blurb. So you sort of get a handle on who that person is. Um, the, the next paragraph I wrote, Logan, for you to peruse. Akamon arrived in Cinderhaven with the express purpose of avenging Duella's death. Though the issue of finding her killer has been resolved due to, spoiler, the subject is still painful for him. I don't know. Well, what do you mean resolved? He wanted revenge and Haley's killer, or D Duella's killer is dead. So uh, my spoiler um, is Haley's death. Okay. I can rephrase that if there's a better way to state that. That after being oh, informed of... I, I could say, after being informed of, spoiler, um, he resolved, he determined that the issue had been resolved, or that he he had to resign to the fact that he would get revenge, or whatever. I can put I can put any number of things there. He may, yeah, the result, the vengeance issue has been resolved, if he believes the party. Okay. Because it was just their word, and okay. mostly it was the cowboys prodding that got him to kind of drop everything. Uh, but also the fact that the party went kind of above and beyond to to show that they're decent people to them. Um, so yeah. So I'm working right now. Uh, Tessa, thank you, Tessa. This actually ended up being very useful. Tessa made a placeholder article for the party who now have a name. They're called the Cinder Rose. Um, we are going to... What is nice about when you do automatic tags in, in World Anvil is, I'll, I'll just start over so you can see this. Um, you at, use the at symbol. And when you use the at symbol, you get a drop down. You can just start typing. So I'm gonna start typing Cinder. And we have two options that automatically offer to us, Cinder Haven and the Cinder Rose. So I'm gonna pick the Cinder Rose. Now what that does is it shows, or it shows some code here in the back. Uh, organization colon and then there's a whole big alphanumeric string here and that's just the right. absolute link to the article but before that the name the cinder rose in straight brackets now what's really cool about this is that for the purposes of making your article flow well you might not necessarily want to use the exact title of the article in your link so what i'm going to start doing is when i link the cinder rose most of the time i'm just going to say the party or our heroes or something like that for some of the earlier articles. So it doesn't always say one of the problems is if you're reading this for the first time and you don't know anything, 
it's going to be a bunch of gobbledygook sometimes when you have every single proper noun mixed into a sentence. So when I say the party told the party informed Akamon of Haley's death and they assume the issue has been resolved. That's what I'm going to write that the party told him this and they hope that the issue has been resolved because of that. All right. That makes sense. Akamon arrived in Cinderhaven with the express purpose of avenging Duella's death. The party informed him of Haley's death and hoped that his need for vengeance has been resolved. I think that is perfect. I am going to add the research note again so that we remember to do that. And it's not perfect right now, but it is content. It is done. So this is, I'm going to, it's a work in progress. I'm going to leave the checkbox that it's work in progress. This is a draft. This is not a draft anymore. We're going to uncheck to publish it, publish it. I'm going to save changes. So hopefully. Oh, one other thing we're going to do. If we decide to add Akamon anywhere else, what we're going to do is add an excerpt. Now, what that does is that creates that little hover text in an article. So, Akamon is... A tiefling mercenary. What's a, what's a good, like, four to five word summary about Akamon? What do you think? Tiefling, mercenary, warlock? Or is that too much like a PC description? This is something that will that. show up when we link him. I don't mind that at all. I think I think the tiefling, a tiefling mercenary warlock, or a tiefling man, warlock, you hmm. know, somebody who cares about his. Uh... I don't know exactly a tiefling. Tiefling warlock who sought vengeance for his sister's death. That's fine. Let's see how that shows up in an article. I'm going to add it to... I'm going to add it to this article so you can sort of see what the highlight looks like. Ah, come on. Save changes. Let's view first. There, how's that look, Logan? You hover over the name Akamon and you get two lines and it shows a little bit about the person. So if we ever use Akamon in any other articles, you'll actually see a little bit of information about them because we've included this excerpt in yeah. his actual article. That makes that makes the gobbledygook of lots of proper nouns a little more easy to um digestible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this took a little longer than I normally would take, partly because I was talking and explaining what I was doing as I did it, but also yeah. it's been a little while since I put these together. Now I'm a, I got the, I got it going a little better. So I think, got the bug. Yeah, I think I can put something together a little faster now. Now, um, let's see, let's go to an article we already have, and I'm gonna double check something about it. Uh. Akamon is now here on our list of articles. Um, I'm looking for Afra. Where is Afra? I believe I renamed her to her full given name, Vasifra. Yes, she is here under Vasifra. So what's probably going to happen is that whenever we mention Afra in something, I will link to the Vasifra article, but probably not change it in the article or change it in the, um, the listing. So let's see, do I have, oh, I don't. Okay, so I haven't actually finished filling out Afra's document, but we okay. have some information about her. Because she's a relatively major character, we're going to take the time to give her a little bit of her info. 
Um, so physical, uh, we're going to see, we have species. She's a half work. She identifies yes. as female. She has she, her pronouns. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add that back to the top panel content. Okay. At some point, I'm just going to have to get a quieter keyboard so I don't have to use push to talk to talk to you guys. Because push to talk while you're typing is challenging. I don't know. I don't have a problem. So All right. So let's see. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm going to copy her physical description. I'm going to do this a different way. I just realized I did all this work. I'm going to do it. My um, my in browser uh, spell checker is British, so likes to tell me to put O U in things. My welcome to my life. Uh, trap that's one L. Screw you! I want one L. Um. So let's see. Profile. I don't have an absolute name yet, or a age for her. All right, so I'm just going to save this. This was a minor change. It's not a big deal to show it in uh, in right. the stream that we have done that. All right, so. Uh, here's an example of Afra's article, um, Vasifra. I gave her a subtitle, which I like to do with a lot of the PCs, but if we have titles or other things that they go by, we might put it in the subheading. Uh, Councilwoman Vasifra, AKA Afra. And then it has a small thing about Afra. Uh, works at the Lightsmiths Guild, well-muscled and stocky. Afra wears fitted leather close to her body to protect herself from the heat of the forge. She keeps her thick black hair up in a braid. No. Okay, so now we're running into a line, uh, a, 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 let's call it a, what do you call it? A conflict of detail? Afra has auburn hair or black hair? Yeah, maybe it used to be black, now it's auburn. People could change their hair, and it's okay. That's fine, but we can't say both colors in the article as her current hair color. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say her hair. <laughs> All right, so um, what is her position at the Lightsmith Guild? Is she head of the Lightsmith Guild? She is the lead there, yeah. But she does not consider herself a lead cleric. She's got other people to do that. Head of the Lightsmiths Guild in Cinderhaven, member of the Sub Rosarium. Mm -hmm. And an ally of the party. Correct. All that sounds reasonable. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad all of that sounded reasonable. <laughs> I would have been very concerned. And then I'm going to say a very quick sentence about Afra's background with Victor. Vasifra was a former member of the Arcane Research Group, Victor. Correct. Whew. 
who were responsible for how would, what, what would be your what would be a one sentence describer of what Victor did or what Afra's ra- role in Victor was? Well, they worked together to accomplish the goal of making a uh, a permanent connection between this world and the shadow between the prime material plane and the shadowfell. That's what they did together. What Afra's particular role was, um, she was um, mostly involved with the the magic items uh, and the creation of different materials they needed to do that. Okay. Um, when they had the Gaius on themselves, were they suppressing their memories of Victor, or were they just... What What was that doing? A Gaius uh, is under... Uh, puts you under... It was more powerful than a Gaius. A Gaius was just the easiest way to explain it. Uh, but a Gaius normally will just put you under a compulsion to not do or say a certain thing. Uh, you're still conscious of it. This was very much different. But it was the root magic is that of the Gaius. Okay, so so would it be fair to say that Afra joined her other members in suppressing their memories of what they did in Victor? Pro- the problem with that is it makes it sound voluntary. Okay, so it wasn't voluntary. Okay, I'm yeah. I'm probably it's been a while and I'm missing details of what might be public knowledge about what happened. Public knowledge is in like the show. <laughs> Well, okay, so there's there's different thoughts here. They entered into it voluntarily, but then they did not understand they were actually what they were actually gonna be giving up. Um, but they entered into the idea of of lock guaranteeing and promising each other they weren't going to talk about it under the power of the King of Secrets. That was something that they did agree to. Vasifro was a former member of the arcane research group Victor, who were aimed at, um, who aimed to create a permanent connection between this world and the Shadowfell. Mm-hmm. Their experiments and action ca- actions caused a ripple effect of pain and suffering in Cinderhaven. Mm-hmm. Af- Afra regained her memories of Victor's dealings with the King of Secrets and continues to deal with guilt from the fallout of those actions. Correct. Absolutely 100% right.
I knew it wasn't going to just be an hour. Of course not. Well, no, we started at around 6.09. We started late, that's right. Yeah, we're fine. We started late. So, um, over here, you can start to see the um, the different um, districts of Cinderhaven coming. This whole map is going to get a revamp sometime, hopefully, before the end of this campaign. Oh, that looks great, um, though. For a, for a visual but, yeah. reference point, to be able to see how it's broken up, that's great. Correct. And then with this, this will overlay on the map that already has the pins on it. Hopefully, uh, that that'll work that way, and... Uh, uh, you'll be able to still see where everything is and, and exists in the cities. Very, very cool. And there are four more districts, I believe. There's the... Um, is that lakeside on the left? All the really fine lake, grids? That's lakeside, yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of that one. I'm actually really excited to have anything happen there. <laughs> that's my request, <laughs> is have something happen that we have to go to lakeside. Uh, so then there's Lakeside, Guildsman, uh, the Crescent, and down here, which is not shown on here, is Bilgeport because it's very, very tiny. Uh, it's basically just a couple of blocks, but they have demanded representation because of the importance to the city. And they're far enough removed that it makes sense. So uh, so three three more districts and then Bilgeport, which won't be shown on the map, right? Um, let me see. I'm adding one more thing to her physical description. I'm going to add one more thing. Uh, Vaspra. I think this is something that I'm about to talk to Tessa about. Um, we are going to add a relationship here. Uh, the tool Vaspra. on top we're using is the World Master. I believe we are what they call now a Sage Access. It is their, their top tier. Um, so we were on Grandmaster, but I believe we're Sage now, if that's what they called it. Because I know he said he updated us right during the meeting the other day. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was Sage. I don't so, know the, a lot of the difference between the different tiers other than some of the backend stuff. I don't know what tools you get access to uh, at the different levels. So I'm not sure what might be different from yours. That is something we should probably be paying attention to and, and what uh, different features there are. We can see if we can figure it out. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of a relationship. I'm going to have to deal with uh, asking Tessa for some of the uh, information here to fill out Pesk and Vasifra's relationship. Uh, Pesk is one of our former PCs. Uh, Tessa is currently playing another character named Callie, who is also on this list. I think Callie has a thing for Vasifra, or I think Tessa in general has a, uh, to take in a shine to Vasifra. So I'm going to ask her for some information here. I'm going to do my best to approximate so for now, I am saying that 
Vasifra is a mentor of Pesks. And that I, Pesk... I didn't say that's acceptable, yeah. Okay. And I was going to say that Pesk is a protege of Vasifra's. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so it looks like um, I'm not sure what the stage level was he was talking about. It might be something specific for for people who are looking to to market a brand in as their own. Um, so yes, technically we have all the features. so some of the features that aren't aren't accessible at the lower levels are the uh, uh, special mar map markers um, and being able to create custom map markers on the maps uh, and uh, some advanced for formatting um, and then the no ads for the visitors and co-authors. So. Uh, when when you come onto ours, you won't see any ads. Uh, when you come onto our thing, so yeah, that'll so allow us uh, to do some CSS. We are technically on the grandmaster. Yeah. yeah, and then um, uh, if you some features that the first tier don't have would be like um, putting labels on map markers, uh, lines, and journey lines. So yeah, you can draw on the map. You can draw little uh, travel markers on maps and things, um, as part of our features. So it's on there somewhere. Oh, it's probably under my account, not yours, because you're not a co-author yet. So that'll probably be, you'll probably need to be the co-owner. Once you're the co-owner, then it'll work. Um, and then Discord web hooks and integration, which I'm very excited to hear about. Uh, and yeah, like that. So. Did you want me to send you one of these and we can see if we can figure out how to import it and overlay it correctly? Sure. Okay. Do we happen to know how big that map is normally? No. Is there a way to look that up? I might be able to look it up. What is Afra? Do we know Afra's? Um, does Afra have a a patron deity, or is she just a domain cleric? Like she just I'm sure she does. I just don't know which one it is. It's um... that's fine. I don't have to put the detail. That's not at all what I wanted. That's what's wrong. Okay. Wait, Afra wasn't a member of the Phoenix Dawn, was she? Mm -mm. No, okay. Not at all. Okay. I'm going to delete a little detail here that was on Afra's uh, info here. This might have been Tessa wrote this. When she first showed Pess to her quarters where she'd be staying with the Lightsmiths Guild, Afra stated that the other rooms, quote, will be full soon. A hint to the coming Phoenix. That was what she meant then. A hint to the coming what? A hint to the coming Phoenix Dawn. I think Tessa was taking it as you were taking literary license and, and foreshadowing as opposed to Afra was, though. Maybe. Let's see here. So if I'm going to export these to well, this here. Tessa, if you are here, I will work with you on fleshing out Pesk and Afra's relationship tree. You didn't do anything. All right. Yeah, I need to know how big that map is. Okie dokie. Um, all right, so just as a little overview, um, here is Vesifra, Councilwoman Vesifra. Um, I have her pronouns and her species, some of her physical description, and her relationship. Specifically, I have Callie and Vesifra and Vesifra and Pesk. I will probably... That's because Callie was the article that this relationship was made from Vesifra and Pesk. That's the... We made it in the Vesifra article. Um, there is a fun little feature that we haven't been utilizing a ton that I know of. Um, when you're editing the relationships, uh, there is a displayed and there's an actual and displayed opinion of, uh, of characters. Yes. Which 
which we haven't been doing a ton of yet. But uh, maybe at some point we will. All right, I think I've got it. All right, great. Um, so thank you guys for watching me make Akamon and Vaspra. Oh, um, one last thing for this. Uh, one of the features of one of the, of the higher tiers is being able to, or being an owner is being able to make a bore or a header. Right now we have the default world anvil header, but as we make our CSS and we work on our design, we're going to have custom headers. Um, you can make one for the category. So if we have a category of allies, enemies, deceased, any of those, we could make one border or one banner that represents that category and it will be inherited by everything underneath it if we s select that option. So we're going to be working on making cool pictures that uh, imply what kind of article you're looking at right now. Yeah. So I just put that over in NerdSync. Cool. I will pull that up. Well, Logan and I share a, um, a basically a, um, as a server, it's like a BitTorrent, but it's for files. It's a private BitTorrent, uh, sir. It's a private, it's a little private BitTorrent sync program put out by some company. I can't remember. Uh, Resilio. And, um, Resilio. Yeah. And, uh, we found it works better than Dropbox or anything. Cause it's, it doesn't go to any cloud. It doesn't back up to any cloud either. So that's kind of the, the, only, the only downside, but, um, it, it just it instantly syncs files between our computers, uh, all the directors. It will eventually. Where did you it put wasn't it? An advertisement, it was just, uh, into just countless heroes, just the main sub countless heroes oh, section. Okay. Cause it's countless heroes. Uh, technically I see that great. Okay. Ones. So you, the Dawn district, I see the Dawn district mm -hmm. so and you test. should just have, be able to put an overlay. Yes. On that map. All right. So, so on the, in the area of, let's go to world, let's go to world maps. Mm -hmm. Let me save Afro. Don't want to accidentally. Thank you. World Anvil for asking me if I want to leave or I guess Chrome. All right. So go to world, go to maps and we will edit. Sorry, I keep holding down the push to talk. And we will edit the map. The map. So we have our Cinderhaven map. Yep. Yes. Mike, Mike already. Okay, great. So you can see that here. Here's Barrel Side and Fairy Dock. Here is the Tea Gardens. Here is the Beer Forge. Um, the only thing is on the other map, I did update that there's now a bridge here, um, which I'll get to get on this map. Eventually we'll update this one, but that should work if it goes incorrect. Alrighty. So and the colors are a little off on this map. I'm not sure why, but. All right. We'll figure that. So let me go here to layer. We're going to add a layer. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to the sink. Dawn district. Do you want a different layer for every district? Or are we going to do one with all the districts? Tess, it was dark at the beginning, uh, and it's Auburn right now. So there's a, uh, she may have died at some point. Yes. Oh, that's something we didn't mention was our aging from the, th the fallback. Okay. I'll add that. Uh, Logan, do you, is this just the Dawn district? Correct. Do you want it, you want it to be a different layer for every district instead of just see the districts? Yeah. That way you can click and see which one. We could do one that's all of them too. Yeah, I would like to do one that... I think it might be nice to be able to click through. I agree. I would like to have at least one that is all of them as well. But I don't have those now. But I thought that's you fine. could turn on and off layers and multiple, put on, turn on multiple layers. Well, let's see. I don't want to... I don't know how much memory that's going to take to have different layers up is all. That was my only... It shouldn't take any more than using any other program such as Google Maps. I mean, that's the idea. It's based on the Google Maps API, I believe. Okay. So. At least that's how I thought this worked. I could be completely wrong. I thought it did overlay. I'm now just trying to see where... Top right. On the... Okay, so it doesn't look like it doesn't over. 
So it looks like I have to export the entire map. Oh, Is there okay. a way to put a transparent layer on it? Or... I thought that's what it was. Ah, uh, okay. So we'll need to talk a little bit about that and figure out what is going on there. Well, at minimum, we'll ju we can always add the picture of the map and just have different uploads Correct. of the map. So it's not a huge deal. Yeah. That, to me, seems like it would take up a lot more space than doing layers, a lot more memory to cycle through them and have to load each one individually, uh, considering they're 10,000 pixels large. But it breaks them up into small pieces. Uh, we'll just need to talk to, uh, uh, to, to our amazing people and figure that out. So, Logan, just to clarify, um, the lower chunk of the city where I my cursor is right now. Um, that's fine. Uh, yes. To the left of the one mile marker. That's the Guildsman's oh. District? The, yeah, that whole thing is the Guildsman District. Right? Okay. And the north is the Temple District? Where's the Temple District? Okay, I'll show you. I'm, I'm going to show you. On yes, please. Hold on. So blue is the temple district. Okay. Yellow is gray wall, although it is larger, more lar more larger, bigger Logan. than gray wall. Logan. The blue is very gray. Why wasn't that gray wall? <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. It's the color choice. So it's absolutely because okay. Because I wasn't thinking about what I was choosing for <laughs> the things. Also, you don't want to put yellow next to orange. I agree. Because it'll blend. I agree. It's anyway. totally fine. Never mind. <laughs> Go to heck. Uh, the orange is Barrel Run. Okay. And the red is the Dawn Dish. Cool. All right. So I need to move some of my markers because I made an, a, I made a, a judgment call and I was wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? What kind of judgment call? I put make? Sill in the wrong, I put Sill's workshop in the wrong place. I, I was trying to guess where the districts were and I was incorrect. What? what? It's across, it's across the lake from Barrel Run. Or from, I didn't, uh, from the from the beer forge. Why I would there's no that. link between the beer forge and Okay, let me just clarify that sometimes you take the ferry to get over there every day. Sometimes geographic details get lost on me, okay? I'm not oh, good with too. maps. <laughs> yeah, the only one I'm good with here is because those but yes, you're way you're way, way down here. So right now oh you can't see that on my screen. Okay, hold on. Uh so let me let me do this. Um let's make this one What's going on here? It's fine. I'm just picking a pin right now. You can make your own. I guess I could. So the divine foundry is. Right in this area here, right. Where? Uh, okay, so where? The divine foundry is already on the map in Cinderhaven. Okay. So it's listed. Alrighty. So then, if you go, if you follow this road down, and all the way over here, it is. I mean, I just place that, put it where it needs to be. That's fine. Well, I mean, I can't move it right now. But then, so this right here, this entire block is the block, I believe, that is the one. I have to look again. But that's the entire block that you guys had as your, uh, um, that was the um, the training facility, uh, which has now been turned into, spoiler, the temple. Um, yes. So that's and right I said there. I said Sill's place was like Sill's place a few is blocks. way over here by the by the uh, it's almost down here by the bridge over to the uh, okay the thing because we had talked about how easy it is to get over to that area because he wanted to be close to when the maestro or wh whatever his name was took over the bought this place he wanted to be as close as possible to the um, their district this is almost like an artisan's district over here uh, okay. right, right this little this little area of all these little tiny shops. That little aisle. Uh, can you put your mouse over it? It is. Well, it was over it. Right? Uh, I'm getting a delay. So. 
So right here. Okay. This, this is all like gotcha. a, little luxury shops and things like that. Well, right on the edge of the of the uh, pro. Okay. And I think we're gonna call it there. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think we sort of got our bearings on a couple of things and We'll have some questions to follow up with World Anvil. And if you have any feedback on this, please let us know. Yeah. I know that we, there were some times we were silent. I don't know how this compares to other world building. I've only watched a couple myself. Um, trying, we're we're gonna get into the groove and we'll do more banter and stuff and try to figure out what we can do and what we can't do while we're working through all of this and more of what you guys want to know. So please tell us what you want to see. Tag us over on. Um, on Twitter, if you can, or on Facebook, you can talk to us over the Nerdsmith page and share the Nerdsmith page. Um, and you can tag uh, our Twitter there or our, our page link over on Nerdsmith. Um, so we want to thank World Anvil very, very much. Oh, also, if you tag us this month, uh, you can, you're can you entered to a chance to win a, a set of diehard dice, solid metal diehard dice. So, uh, yeah. Make sure you Heck yeah. Well. Did, uh, did I was editing something? Did you give them our Twitter? I did not. Our Twitter is uh, at DRPG show. No, nope. Discover, at Discover RPG. RPG show. At Discover RPG show. A little long. That's okay. We could always change it to at Discover RPG, nope. but we've been no, saying we it for we too long. It at Discover underscore RPG. Oh, no, never mind. But we can't just change it to Discover RPG because somebody got banned with that account. They're never going to lock it. Sigh. Yeah. Just like somebody got banned with Devious Muppet, they're never going to. And Angela's crashing like crazy, uh, so I don't know if it's just yeah, it's just her. Okay, so we should be good, I think, right? Hello, everyone's still. Oh no, I don't know if everyone's here. I got to look. Da, da, da. Bye, Ange. We love. Okay, I am not freezing. Okay, good. So uh, we're gonna go and just say. Uh, thank you, everyone. And oh, you see that your your wonderful chat way over there is uh, is here as well. We figured we'd be engaging a lot more with the chat on this one. In the future, we absolutely will. Uh, so that will allow us to, um, for anybody watching it video on demand, we'll be able to see what the heck we're talking about, you know? Uh, so if you have any suggestions for, oh, wow. Now I'm every place. That's, that's just great. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here because that's three times the Logan, which is like 17 times the danger. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and call it and be all done. We're going to continue to do this. If you liked it, please let us know. Um, this oh, is Logan's all the time. Oh, Logan's oh, all the time. Thanks. Welcome back. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you very much. And we will see you <laughs> tonight at, six, at 7 o'clock PST for Countless Heroes. Or worst case scenario, we'll see you hopefully for uh, DRPG next Wednesday at noon PST. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tonight. Bye. -bye. Bye.